Hey guys, Michael here again with another tutorial. Sorry, a little bit late this week. I uh, ran into some issues on the weekend which I had to resolve before I could get into doing tutorials. So uh, this one's coming at you about UVs. Um, not about doing them so much, but more about preparing your model to UV and um, a little sort of trick that I like to use um, that I'm not sure that everyone knows about. So. If you're starting out, you may not already know this, but um, if you're a vet, you may already know this. I just thought just because something is common sense, it doesn't mean that everyone knows how to do it. So um, I've got a model here uh, that you may be familiar with. It's one that I did in ZBrush a long time ago, um, and it's just made up of lots of different parts, as you can see. Um, and I want to UV this, say, in 3D coat, um, but if I do UV this in 3D coat, there's going to be some like tough to get to areas um, like, you know, behind this hand and stuff. So I can prepare this model um, before I send it to 3D coat um, to make my UVing a little bit easier. And this is this is a technique you could use with um, uh, with any object. It could be like a, a set piece for a video game. Um, it could be a character. Um, it does help for it to be symmetrical, but it's not 100% necessary. Um, obviously, this being symmetrical, I could just UV it in symmetry mode in 3D code. Um, but if it's asymmetrical, you can use the same technique. It just means you don't have to move things left and right uh, symmetrically like I'm about to show you. So what do we do? Um, well, if you've got them all as separate parts, generally your transforms, say, are going to be... Um, the gizmo is going to be centered on each piece. So um, you can quickly sort of fix this by going edit mesh, uh, combine, and then it will send the um, center to the world center and make sure that your object's in the world center. You can quickly do that by going up here and typing 000 and making sure it is world center. Um, this is because I just imported it, but um, you know I could move it over here and then do that. So I know that it's uh, the center of the object is directly in the center of the scene, uh, which just helps for when I move into 3D coat, obviously um, it's gonna generate in 3D coat uh, in, in the center so I can do it, you know, map it symmetrically and paint it symmetrically. Um, so how do we do this? Well, now that it's combined, we're actually gonna um, go to mesh, go to separate, and we're gonna get all the parts separately. Um, and the reason we're separating it is because we're actually retaining the gizmo being on the world center um, so we can move things away from the model but what I'm going to do is snap the transform uh, tool to the grid so if I hold down X while I'm moving it um, I'm going to move this three that was three wasn't it one, two, three. So if I move that hand three spaces to the left, then I want to do this same, but the opposite on the right hand side. So one, two, three. And then I'm just going to go through and continue to do that um, the whole way around the model. And the reason this makes it easier is because now when you're painting, especially if this is going to be for animation, you can get in behind these parts that would be nearly too close to the body to get to or if they're parts of the model that aren't actually going to ever be seen, like this is an animating, like if it's a prop or something like that, for instance, you can go in and delete the faces that you aren't using to save space on your UV map. So you can get some more texture resolution in there, uh, which is a really good idea. So that's actually something I could do with this tongue. Uh, if I just move him forward on the Z, you see there's like an area under the here that um, I could just completely wipe out, which would save me a whole lot of space on the UV map. Um, I'm not really going to bother because I'm not planning on doing anything with this model um, again, really, but um, I just wanted to use this one as an example. So I'm just going to quickly go through and separate uh, and move all these uh, parts symmetrically away from the center of the model. So I've got a bit of space to paint with when I go into 3D coat. All right, so you can see now that he's completely split up. And yeah, once again, I could um, go through and say with the teeth here, uh, I could just delete all those faces there because they're gonna be embedded in his head the entire time. Uh, the same with the underside of uh, the horn. 
um, which is just as simple as selecting the object, right clicking on it and holding, selecting faces and then just selecting the faces. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm not, and then just clicking delete obviously, um, but I'm not going to go through and do that for this one because like I said, I'm not going to actually do this for real. This is just an example. Um, so now that you've got your model all separated up, um, now it's just as simple as selecting the whole lot again and going to object mode first helps. Uh, selecting it all, going to mesh, uh, going to combine. Uh, it doesn't hurt to delete by type history as well, just so you get rid of all that junk. Um, and then it's maintaining that world center as you can see, so which is also obviously the center of the model. Um, and then you're free to just export that um, as you normally would by going File, uh, Export Selection because this is one object now. And then um, just call it Tongue Face Example. Okay, so I've opened them up in 3D Coat um, as you can see. Um, and if I'm going to paint with uh, on him, um, I can hit S and just go X axis symmetry. And you can see that it's completely symmetrical down the center. So if I paint on one horn or paint on the other, same for the eye. Uh, yeah, same for the teeth. I was worried I got those in the wrong spot. Hand and feet and all that good business as well. Um, so yeah, obviously um, if I wanted to UV map him first, I've just done an auto map on this, but I can actually go in and get the seams that are in the um, hard to reach spots that you know, the back side of the tongue that's inside the mouth or or whatever, you know, um, inside the, the hand and whatnot. All right, and um, now I have re-imported the mesh into Maya. Uh, so I'm just gonna select it, go to edit mesh, uh, sorry, go to mesh and go separate. And that's gonna give me all the um, uh, separated objects as separated pieces. Um, so now because the, um, the center um, was on the world, it still snapped to the center of the grid. So I can use the same movement in the opposite direction as I was when I was separating it, just by holding down the X key to snap to grid, um, and then just move everything back into place. And this makes it a lot easier than just eyeballing it, um, as you may have been inclined to do, um, instead of snapping it to the grid. So yeah, I can just go through now and quickly move everything back into place. Um, and then we've got a finished ready to roll model. So yeah, this hopefully is um, useful to someone because um, I know when I sort of first learned about it, I was like, oh, that's, you know, makes things way easier. Um, and I'd already been UV mapping things in a way dumber way. So um, hopefully one of you out there sees this one and is like, ah, well, that's a good workflow. I will totally do this as well. Um, so if it has helped you, just let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Um, and yeah, if you've liked the video, uh, please click the like button. It helps other people find out about this great UV mapping technique. Um, and also, if you haven't already, subscribe because I do a lot of tutorial videos, uh, generally one a week. Uh, I'm sorry about last week, uh, just a, a little bit busy on the weekend. Uh, but we should have another uh, Render Man video actually coming up this weekend. So look forward to that. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching anyways. And um, happy modeling and rendering and UV mapping.